Howdy y'all, Krista here with Little Salty Homesteader. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today I am going to be doing another weekly update here in my North Texas Zone 8 garden. Uh, it's 8A or 8B, I think it's 8B though. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. Let's see what's going on. It is starting to get super hot out here. Uh, so some things are doing pretty well and some things maybe not so much. So let's go see what's happening. All right, as usual with my weekly garden updates, I am starting over here in the tomato patch. As you can see, I have installed a shade cloth here. It is 40%, so uh, it filters out 40% of the hot sunlight. It lowers the temperature underneath about 10 degrees. Um, so underneath there right now, it is about 85 degrees. It does impact a bit of the airflow, so the air gets a little bit stale in there. Um, but some breezes and stuff still get through. So uh, overall, the plants are looking pretty healthy in here. I came through and I pruned quite a bit the other day. I didn't prune everything, but I did uh, prune a bunch of like spider mite damage off of this plant right here. And then um, just some like bottom leaves that had died off and were just looking crispy and ugly. Um, I have a garden spider here. I think that might be a female. She's just not very big yet. So uh, I'll wait a little while and see if she gets any bigger before I name her. I don't want to, you know, misgender my spider here. So I'm just waiting to see what's going to happen. Um, but we finally have some Listata de Giandia eggplants growing. And look how pretty, look how pretty. Lots of striping and variegation in these fruits. And there's quite a few fruits on here. Um, we have done quite a bit to eliminate the spider mites because um, they were going pretty hardcore on the eggplants. Um, but it looks like things are much better for them. This tomatillo, this is the one that I started from seed. And this thing is like, see if I can show you how truly massive this <laughs> this plant is. That is a humongous tomatillo. It's larger than some of my tomato plants. Um, it's just kind of flopped over here. I don't really have it supported anyway, but with it flopped over, it puts it a lot closer to those tomatillos. So hopefully they'll be able to pollinate each other and I'll have more than that one fruit that's hanging right there if you can see that. Uh, the tomato production itself is starting to slow down. Um, you can actually see some blooms up here from, I'm not sure if that's Roselle or Evil Olive. We'll see as it grows. Um, but for the most part, I haven't been harvesting a whole ton the past couple of weeks. Uh, hopefully the shade cloth will trigger some more blooming and fruiting throughout all of these beds. Uh, this, these are actually brand new blooms that just popped up in the last week. So I do think that the shade cloth is helping. Um, back to this bed. Let's come down here and see what we have going on here. Just kind of have to weed my way through here. <laughs> so um, I have this really beautiful Thai basil and it actually does pretty well in the in the heat. Um, it's not fully protected by this shade cloth, so it does get quite a bit of sunlight, as you can see. And I have this beautiful Italian oregano. Both of these things are kind of taking over this corner, and it looks really pretty and fluffy, so I'm totally good with that happening. I do have a few cherry tomatoes that I need to come through and harvest. Where was that one? There's one right there. There's one right there maybe. Um, so there's a few tomatoes in this bed that can be harvested. Uh, one thing that I am battling that I don't know how to get rid of is grasshoppers. Um, last week I was battling leaf footed bugs and I used Castile soap diluted in a spray bottle and that worked really well. I haven't had any issues um, since I did that and coincidentally it also 
helped with the spider mite problem that I've been having. So um, those two pests have not really been as much of a concern for me. What I'm dealing with now is grasshoppers and they're really big. They're like this long now. They went from little baby ones to like massive grown up ones really quick. And I have some cow peas here. These two actually need to be harvested because they are nice and dried out. Ants. I don't know why the ants like the cow peas so much, but they really do. Uh, one thing that I did, um, because there was some sort of issue at this end of this bed, um, my tricolor sage, like the whole entire middle of it, just kind of died off. So I pruned it back and that seems to have helped the rest of the plant because it's looking much healthier now. And there was a borage, a blue borage here that was sick with something. Um, so I cut it down and I'm really glad that I did because the stem was hollow on the inside. So I think it had some sort of fungal thing going on and that has also helped this plant um, fight off whatever that was because it was affecting all three plants. But uh, this plant right now is acting as a trap crop for birds. I know that sounds silly. Um, but that is who is pecking holes in these tomatoes. This is the only plant that they're messing with, so I'm just kind of leaving it for them to get their water. I know it's hot and they're thirsty and, you know, it's on the edge here, so they just fly by and get whatever juices they can get from the tomatoes. Um, so this one they have gone after. That one I actually need to pull off, but it's like really squishy and nasty. And then that one they have pecked at. So um, I'm just letting them have this plant essentially for their personal water thing until I can get a bird bath or some sort of water feature out here for them. I'm okay with it. I did get a few tomatoes from this plant for my own personal use, so it's okay. Uh, the birds are assisting with the grasshoppers, so it's kind of my tax to the birds for you know, them helping me with the other issue that I have going on. Um, I do have a few tomatoes that I need to harvest in here today. So we have this guy right here, and this is an Arkansas Traveler, I believe. And then I have some porters here. These kind of apple shaped ones, I think are porters. Um, and I have several of those. And then I think that might be a Louisiana pink, but it also looks like it has some splitting issues. But there's some more porter. That plant kind of just ran wild. And then it's also on the ground here, but none of these are ready to be harvested. Um, oh, it looks like there's aroma back there. That's ready, maybe two. That's cool. So, um, there's also some other cow peas that are planted down this bed, starting to create some peas there, so that's cool. Um, cow peas do really well in the heat, so they really ought to start taking off soon since it is really blasted hot out here. This bed right here, this one had my largest varieties of tomatoes. So think the big ox hearts. Um, this one also had Thorburn's terracotta and it still has one plant right here that has tomato on it and some blooms. I'm hoping that the shade cloth is covering it enough to be able to help it get some fruit going. Um, the plant, this, this particular plant overall is relatively healthy so Hopefully, if I can keep it alive, then I'll get a fall run or the shade cloth will help sort of set some fruit here. Um, this is Italian ox heart, I think, or it might be another Thorburn's terracotta that kind of went that way. Oh yes, it is. This is the other Thorburn's terracotta. So it has blooms as well. Um, and it looks like it's a pretty healthy plant. Um, I only have one Italian heirloom and it's right here on the corner and I'm not sure 100% if it's going to set more fruit. 
It does have more blooms, but it is not under shade cloth at all. Um, it only gets shade from the tree and then late, super late in the day from the house. So I'm not 100% sure how much anything in this bed is actually going to set any more fruit. Um, I used the shade cloth that I already had. I did not purchase a new one. You can see the hole up there in it. Um, and I just kind of stretched it as far as I could to cover as much as I could um, because my thought process was use what you have, protect what you can, and do the best you can um, because procuring new shade cloth not really in the budget this year uh, after um, filling these new raised beds with soil. So um, I have made myself okay with knowing there won't be any more tomatoes likely coming out of this bed unless I can keep this Costaludo Genovese alive until the fall and then it will do a furious run um, whenever it cools back down. But overall, the health of the tomato patch, considering where we are in the season, is pretty good. Um, I, I see some more pruning that I need to do. I see some pest damage that I need to get rid of and things like that. But overall, we have a pretty fluffy, lush, full of tomatoes, tomato patch happening. Um, I'm processing a lot. I actually have two bowls in the kitchen that I need to process. Uh, more of so um, definitely been a good tomato year all that rain that we got at the end of May and beginning of June really set up the garden to be super successful um, so I'm really thankful for that but now we're entering into the ridiculously hot point so it will be interesting to see how this garden reacts to the scorching temperatures um, with both with the shade cloth and then without obviously this stuff is probably gonna get crispy um, I did plant I direct sowed some squash seeds in this bed and then the back bed um, two different varieties of squash so I'm just waiting for those to sprout if I remember correctly it went here um, I sowed them three days ago and I have apparently no memory at all of the things that I do. So um, I'm just kind of keeping an eye out on those beds to see whenever those uh, germinate and hopefully we do get a good run of squash this year. Um, but moving on to these beds, these beds are like crazy wild right now. And I'm torn in a place of loving the wild and also feeling overwhelmed by the chaos of it, if that makes any sense at all. So, um, what I'm thinking about doing is, actually, I'm definitely going to, because it looks like this borage has the same issue that the other one had. I need to cut this borage down. Um, it's Obviously, it's flopped over and not doing well at this point. So I need to cut that one down. Um, but I also believe that I either need to give these really tall marigold types a really hard prune back and sort of force them to bush out a little bit more or just pull them out completely. Um, I do hate pulling them out completely, completely because of the pest repelling benefits that they do have, um, but they're looking really wild whenever the wind blows too hard one way or the other the branches break and then they grow every which direction um, so yeah that's something that I do need to figure out this week because um, as you can see you know it's like I don't need I don't know it's not living its happiest life here so I need to figure out what I can do to help it live a happier life um, either by pruning or removing it completely I guess it wouldn't be alive if I removed it completely but yeah you know, that's the thoughts that go through my head at 10 p.m. at night when I'm supposed to be asleep uh, the okra is starting to get quite tall this is probably chest height for me ish um, I'm five six so that gives you a pretty good idea probably four four and a half foot tall at this point um, 
this I am 99% sure is cardinal basil by looking at the stems on it and then the leaves. Um, I have not, I've planted the cardinal basil several years in a row. Man, that smells really good though. Holy moly. Um, I planted it several years in a row. I have never had it bolt in all of the years that I've grown it. So I don't know if it's like mega heat tolerant or what, um, but it looks like I'm finally going to get to see the flower heads that come off of this basil. So I'm really excited about that. Some of this other basil, I am going to prune heavily back and let it kind of bush out a little bit more um, for a few reasons. One, it has started to go to seed quite heavily at this point and I don't want the plants to die um, because it thinks that its job is done once it starts to generate seeds. So I want to prune it heavily back. And then the other reason is because once it does bolt, they say it makes the flavor a little bit more bitter. I have not personally experienced that, um, but it would be nice to have a little bit of a bushier plant rather than one that is equally as tall as my okra here. So um, that's something else that I need to do. Unfortunately, because it is so hot, I have to do all of my garden work either at 6 a.m. or 8 p.m. <laughs> and at both times I am not the most awake human. So, uh, you know, it's kind of trying to find time whenever the weather is cooperating a little bit and it's not blasted hot. Um, these radishes, let me come around to the back here so you can see how chaotic this is. These are white icicle radishes and I planted these as um, companion plants for the cucumber plants that are going wild out of the front of the beds and what it's supposed to do once it goes to seed like this is assist with uh, cucumber beetles and some other pests it's supposed to help repel them um, I think that it's working I don't know I haven't really seen cucumber beetles on my cucumber plants I've seen them in other places so I do think that the icicle radish works for that um, but at this point it's hard to get back here and weed eat um, it looks messy I'm sure my husband just thinks wow what a chaotic mess anytime he looks out here um, so I'm going to be pulling these out pretty shortly I'm just waiting for a few more seed pods to generate and then um, I'll cut this down, let these dry, and then I'll have more icicle radish seeds for the next go around of pest repelling that I need to do. Uh, I believe that it works on cucumber beetles and squash bugs, possibly squash vine borers. I'm not 100% sure on um, the vine borer part. As far as I know, nothing repels those jerks, um, but I have not seen squash bugs um, anywhere near the cucumbers or the one lonely the two lonely squash plants that I have um, so I think that the white icicle radish does work for those plants at any rate um, so we do have black beauty zucchini here and it's it's not as it just has like a really long like root stem type thing coming out of the ground. It hasn't been affected by any sort of squash bad guys yet. I do check it regularly for um, squash bug eggs and such and then the squash vine borer eggs. Um, I also have this yellow scallop patty pan squash here. Um, it's finally starting to put on a little bit of good growth. I pulled the nasturtiums out of this container, this pocket, because they were just looking really sad and defeated. They got really hammered hard by the sun. Uh, so that gave that a little bit more airflow and a little bit more room to stretch its legs and grow. So hopefully um, we start seeing some squash off of those plants soon. And then over here is just another bed of chaos and wild unruly things happening um it's like a weird mix of beauty and wow and oh boy <laughs> um yes that's what it that's exactly what it is it is a weird mix of beauty wow and oh boy um because i have the same like wild white icicle radish 
thing happening here. Um, all my basil is, you know, it needs to be pruned back, all of it, all the way around. My lettuce basil, I have pruned some down, but I need to come back and do it again. I think that's lemon basil back there. This is just regular Genovese. Um, this borage seems to be doing okay. This is a white variety. And what I've noticed is that the white tends to be healthier than the blue. Uh, this is actually the first year that I've been able to grow the blue at all because it usually gets sick before this point even and dies off completely uh, before it even reaches the flowering stage. So this is the longest that I've been able to grow the blue borage. Um, but last year I had white borage right here actually. And it was like this giant mound in this whole corner of the bed and I ended up having to cut it down because it just choked everything else out because it got so big and it was so healthy and so lush. So in my experience, the white borage has been healthier than the blue borage. Now I don't know if I just got some seeds that were sick on the blue end or if that's just everybody's experience. I'm not 100% sure, but um, yeah, I like growing the white one because of that. Um, these guys, these mulatto, Isleno peppers, uh, they're supposed to ripen to brown and they have not, they have ripened to red. Um, they, you can see they kind of turn brown here, um, but that only lasts like 45 seconds and then they start turning orange and then they start turning red. So I don't know if these actually are not mulatto Isleno peppers or um, I just didn't understand what those peppers were going to do. Um, I'm switching back to just straight poblanos next year uh, because I grew these to be like a brown poblano type and that's not what this is. So um, yeah, switching back to poblanos next year, um, making a few other like pepper plant changes, but that's going to be like the most noticeable switch amongst the mild peppers um, because I'm growing this for chili powder and if this isn't the chili that I want for chili powder, uh, I'm gonna be sad because we eat so many tacos. So um, I do have a couple of violet sparkle plants and there are violet sparkle peppers growing on them. Um, I haven't been like mega impressed by the flavor of these. Maybe I need to let them get more purple. Um, we'll see. Sorry, an ant bit me on my arm and it's itching. Okay, uh, we're gonna take a second to admire the okra blossom there because they're so pretty. I did harvest a few okra pods this morning. I also harvested three cucumbers this morning. I think I have enough now to put back another quart of pickles. I'm just doing the refrigerator pickles because we eat them quickly enough and I'm not worried about them, you know, going bad before we get to them. Um, so I, I have like seven pickles in there. I think that's plenty for another, I mean, seven cucumbers. I think that's plenty for another jar. This is the Ajvarski pepper. And this is the first one that I'm actually letting ripen on the vine. The other one um, accidentally broke off of the stem. And so it ripened, actually it didn't even ripen. We just cut it up and use it for grilled veggies. So my plan is to add that to like my paprika blend from the bell peppers and then the lessia that's on the end and then I also have some purple beauty bells something got that one so I'm gonna have to remove it um, but there's a few on the plants so I this um, these seeds were from my papa so I try to grow them every year in his memory um, but I he was he was my grandfather we called him papa um, would, the name suited him. He couldn't have been anybody else but Papa. Uh, even like perfect strangers called him Papa. So um, he was who I learned like the gardening basics from whenever I was growing up. Um, he was probably the best grandpa any kid could ever get asked for. And um, a lot of things that I've done in my life were because he believed in me and didn't treat me like, oh, you're a girl, you can't do that. So um, I try to do a lot of things in his memory and in his honor, and it seems really silly to some people, I'm sure, but that's okay. I will always grow plants that he grew. Um, 
These okras are actually taller than the one down there, maybe? I don't know, let's, let's see. I don't know, maybe that one down there is taller. That one at the very end, that one at that end down there, that one is white velvet, and I grew it in the exact same spot last year, and it was 12 feet tall. I'm not even joking, it was like way above the fence. Um, these, I mean, I grew okra in both beds last year and all of them got massively tall and were taller than the fence and it was majestic. I had an okra forest going on and I loved it. Um, but um, that one, the white velvet was the tallest of all of the plants. So I don't know if that variety just gets really massive or it just had like a super healthy spot of soil or what. Um, but it looks like, <laughs> I, I think that's just that okra because it looks like it might be a little bit taller than this one. What do you guys think? Is that one taller or are they the same height? Let's see if I can back up this way. I don't know. I think white velvet is taking the lead there. Uh, this end is Alabama red. Um, I have them in like alphabetical order all the way down. So it's like Alabama red, Clemson spineless, Eagle pass, um, Jing orange, um, hill country, there's a hill country and then Jing orange and then white velvet. So Alabama red and the one lone white velvet down there are the tallest, uh, but Jing orange is right behind and then hill country and then Clemson spineless and then Eagle pass, I think is right there. So it's all growing right along. Those are some wild and crazy raised beds right there. Sometimes I kind of like to look at the garden from this angle because it kind of hides a little bit of the ugly stuff that's going on in some of the tomato beds. And it also gives you a good view of all of the stuff that is just majestically growing. Um, even though it's a little wild and chaotic and uh, I need to do some cleanup within the garden. It's just amazing to me how lush and healthy and alive it is still at this point. Uh, sunflowers. Do you have a little bit of an update on the sunflowers? I think this is Lemon Queen because of how bright yellow that is. But that one opened up fully at maybe yesterday. I wasn't here yesterday, so I'm not 100% sure. And then we have Sunspot Dwarf over here. So we have a couple of sunflowers opening, opened in this area. Um, these guys are still formulating their, their flower heads. And I don't really know what kind they're going to be. It's going to be a surprise when they open. So we'll see. The flower bed. Um, if you did not see last week's update, I cut down all of the zinnias. Uh, they had powdery mildew really badly. They were starting to get crispy and turn brown and it was going to be easier for me to start seeds and transplant um, out into the raised bed than it was for me to try to treat the, mild the powdery mildew problem um, because it's so humid here. I would literally just be out here all day spraying plants with peroxide. So um, I have started the transplant process. That is a weed, um, but you can kind of see where I've messed up all my pretty mulch. But we have some zinnias that have been transplanted in here. We have some dwarf varieties of sunflowers that have been transplanted. Um, cosmos that have been transplanted. And then there are also some gomfrina somewhere around here. I think that might be Gomfrina right there. These look pretty good, uh, especially considering I'm transplanting them in late June whenever it's hot. So you can see everything that I've transplanted so far looks pretty healthy. Um, any sort of like leaf crispiness was already there. Um, the zinnias along the back were transplanted first because they were outgrowing their cells that they were in. Those are the Benares giant, so they get quite tall. Um, and then we have, that's a hollyhock. I'm not sure if that's the red or the black one, 
um, but it will bloom next year and then we'll find out. We'll have a pretty surprise. We also have eggplant on a stick here. And I cleaned out all of the plants that were right here in this area because we want to put a big stepping stone there. And I know that I had the blue spice basil and I said I'm going to leave it because I love it because it's blue spice basil. But uh, my husband didn't like that it was in the way of him getting out into the yard. So um, because I have it in a few other places, I went ahead and pulled it up even though it did make me a little sad. Um, and then I have some varieties of butterfly milkweed that, ha that I have transplanted. Um, early in the spring, I transplanted them and they're finally starting to grow pretty well and they look pretty good. Um, this beauty right here is Sahara Rudbeckia and it's just I come out here and I admire it at least four times a day because it's just so pretty and I have another one at that end down there um, next to those red snapdragons in the corner um, and it's going to open soon it's not open yet so it's it's really cool to see uh, it's really cool to see stuff that you sow or stuff that you plant start to bloom these I cold stratified in the refrigerator um, starting in January or February and then transplanted them out after they sprouted and um, you can uh, sorry I placed them on a heat mat after like 40 days in the refrigerator and then everything that germinated the rudbeckia the milkweeds some echinacea some gallardia um, all of those were transplanted out if they germinated and made it through the cold stratification and the uh, germination process so I have a few perennials in here that hopefully will continue to come back and get bigger and stronger and all of that. Um, but overall, this flower bed is starting to take shape again after cutting down all those zinnias. I still need to transplant out my super heat tolerant perfusion series zinnias. And I also have some short varieties of marigolds that need to be transplanted out as well. Um, those will be staggered along the fronts, both the zinnias and the marigolds. Um, and then whatever I have left after planting in this flower bed and the front flower bed will be transplanted into the vegetable garden just to help give some color and some life. Um, since those are dwarf varieties, hopefully they don't get too wild. Um, but that's the plan at the moment. Over here... I pulled out most of the bush beans. I still have two or three left because they had little baby beans on them. And then I direct sowed cream peas in their, in their place. So cream peas are very similar to the cow peas. Um, the cow peas, most of them have, they look like black eyed peas. They might have different color variations or different pattern variations, but the cream peas do not have any of those like black spots where that spot is is just slightly more tan um, and they're smaller so I am just gonna have a whole mix of peas here which is cool uh, this one is actually ready I think this is purple hole pink eye and um, so set you guys I'm gonna set you guys down so I can show you so I think this is the pink eye purple hole so as you can see, the hole gets quite dark. And then whenever you open it, the eye of the pea is kind of pinkish. So I think that's how it gets its name. Really creative, huh? Um, so I'm just placing these on a dehydrator tray. I'm not actually dehydrating it with the electronic dehydrator. I'm just letting the air flow in the house do that for me. Um, and then I'm going to place them in a jar with like one of those little oxygen absorber pack thingies. Um, so that is the plan for that so far. If I have an abundance, then I will share with my mom and my, my nanny, my grandma. So um, that is the green stock with all the peas in it. There's quite a few that are growing and some of these down here are also cream peas. So, um, and since these love heat, the more you pick them, the more they'll grow. 
and then it will just be a grand old pea party. This green stock uh, is this green stock is the green stock that has the hot peppers growing in it. Um, I was not here yesterday, so things did not get watered. I had a work function where I was away from the house for about 15 hours. Um, so by the time I got home, it was already dark and I couldn't see out here to water really well. Um, this was incredibly sad looking when I came out and watered this morning. So you can see where some of that heat damage from yesterday kind of wrecked some of these marigolds. So I need to come in and heavily prune those. I did fertilize the other day um, with some plant tone and some earthworm castings. So the plants, the pepper plants themselves are pretty healthy. They were really sad this morning, but they seem to have bounced back fine. Uh, there's lots of little peppers growing all over. Um, this one has a couple, another rattlesnake pepper. We did harvest the big one that was on here. Um, it was, it was decent. It wasn't one that, I don't think it's one I'm gonna grow again because I'm focusing on like food production, preservation. Uh, so I wanna stick with the things that we're going to eat a lot of. Although my husband did really like these bikino peppers. Uh, he said they have a really good flavor, so I may grow these again. So we'll see. Um, Serrano's doing really well. Uh, jalapenos are doing not too badly, as long as I can keep it watered. So like this basil got fried yesterday because I didn't water. But as long as I can keep the rest of it watered the rest of the season, um, I should be able to get lots of peppers off of here. Um, I, like I said, I do need to come heavily prune the marigolds because they make the whole green stock look like it's sick because of not being watered yesterday, but it's relatively in good shape considering how hot it is right now. Strawberries, not much has changed there. Lime tree, um, there are three limes, if you can see them all, one, two, three. Uh, this bucket was in there, but what was happening, because this does have a bottom in it, uh, this is like a water reservoir, so it's like a self-wicking cell. Um, what was happening is the water was starting to stand in the bottom and it was breeding mosquitoes and we have enough mosquitoes in Texas without me helping. So I took the bucket out so that it would drain off of the patio and into the flower bed here. Uh, and then if we get any sort of heavy rains or anything, I'll have to come manually dump this. But once these limes are harvested, this will be transplanted into here and then it will be fine. Um, the point of the self wicking water reservoir is so we don't have to water slash fertilize so much. And um, it helps the roots go down to the water rather than coming up to the surface to try to get the water. This green stalk also looked quite sad this morning um, because I wasn't here to water it yesterday, um, but it has recovered other than a couple of crispy leaves um, from getting overheated. Now, the chamomile is done for the season. You can see here, um, it just fizzled out within the last week. You guys saw it was starting to fizzle and now it's done. I harvested a ton of flowers off of here. Lily and I ought to each get a cup of tea from the chamomile flowers. So we're both really happy about that. And they smell like apples, which is glorious. I don't know what they taste like. We're gonna find that out whenever we make our tea. Um, but I have harvested two okra pods off of these patio varieties so far. And since okra is a summer loving plant, I'm expecting a lot more out of these. Um, I don't see anything blooming right now this morning, um, but one of those pods snuck up on me, so it's probably really easy to miss whenever it is blooming with all this other green lushness happening. Uh, not much is different with these plants other than this cucumber looking relatively sad, probably from not being watered yesterday. Uh, yeah, that's, I don't expect this plant to live too much longer. Um, 
whenever I cut it down, I'll just leave that pocket empty to prepare for fall. I'm not sure what I'm planting in here yet, but I'm sure I'll figure it out as uh, it gets time to starting to sow seeds and stuff. Um, habanero, habanero, lemon, habanero, and then we have, where is the Aleppo right here? And then we have Carolina Reaper right here. Um, all of this has also been fertilized and um, I placed earthworm castings in the pockets as well. Now, um, green stock does recommend using liquid fertilizer with these, but um, because it is so hot right now and I'm watering so often, um, I did come put plant tone in each individual pocket and then I am just watering it in a little bit um, at a time and then letting that kind of be the slow release fertilizer um, because the more you water, the more the nutrients are going to run out of any container, not just the green stock um, because the, most containers do have the drainage holes at the bottom for water to run out. Um, showed you guys the peas over there. The two pots, the two black grow bags in front of the greenhouse. I transplanted more zinnias and then a couple of other flowers in two. I think one has gomfrina and then the other one has cosmos. Um, I just kind of spread out whatever extras I had that weren't going to go into the front flower bed. Um, and then I think I also put a zinnia. Oh yes, zinnia there. And then there's one in this one as well. That one actually looks really well, so we'll see. Um, and then back here, just gonna take a quick minute to show you guys what's happening. So this is all the stuff that still needs to be transplanted, whether it be the front or the back, um, quite a bit. Now this is the, these are the profusion zinnias. Um, this one obviously had better germination than the other two varieties, it's okay. Um, I'm happy that we're gonna have like a summer tolerant, a super summer tolerant variety in the garden. This one is the salmon one, I think. Uh, red, yellow, bicolor. Okay, well, that's the perfect summer colors. So cool. Um, these are sunflowers that need to go into the front. And then these marigolds are going kind of all over the place. And then gomfrina going into the front. And then the basil. Um, as it gets a little bit bigger, I'll transplant it out wherever I have space. Um, this is purple varieties. The whole point of this is for basil lemonade to make with Lily um, so that we can turn a purple beverage pink. And because purple plants are pretty. Back here, I am 99% sure these are illumination zinnias. Um, I need to come prune off the ones that are you know, on their way out the door to kind of spark more flower growth, but these are really pretty. They add a fun bit of color to the back here. Uh, this is my hardy hibiscus. I actually need to get this guy a bigger home because he's probably outgrown this five gallon bucket at this point. This is the third year in this bucket. Um, so it's not getting as many blooms as it could, sorry. But this one, Sorry, sounds like Logan's playing video games in there. So sorry that it's so noisy, but the, I think this one's about to bloom. They only last a few hours and then they fall off. Oak leaf hydrangea looks great. Um, I'm, I got that from a friend last year and I wasn't sure if I would like the plant, but I actually do, I really love it a lot. Um, and then this is my son's Logan's who's inside being loud. This is his mom. Um, it, finished its spring run of blooms so I will come back and prune it really good fertilize put a little bit more soil in there because the soil is low and in the fall we should get some more um, aloe of course but that get out of the way the trash cans that is the late June garden update but that is basically it for this weekly update in my north texas zone 8 hot as hades late june garden 
Um, I know that was a really long update for you guys. I appreciate you sticking with me through the whole thing. If you did like this update video and you want to see more like it, please like and subscribe and do all those YouTube things. It is greatly helping my channel. Um, but that's all I have for you guys today, I promise. Um, but until next time, go find a way to get those garden manicures.